Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is a small video explaining what is Sysmon and how to install it for in-home labs. I will try to keep this video as small and precise as possible. Having said that, let's get started. Before starting, let's briefly understand Sysmon. Sysmon is one of the sys internal tools that once installed will remain persistent in the system and perform monitoring and login of the system events. Initially, it was developed for the Windows operating system, but now it is available for the Linux systems as well. For this video, I will demonstrate the Sysmon installation on the Windows operating system. So the question arises, why use Sysmon when we already have default Windows login events, which we can access from Event Viewer? So the answer to that would be Sysmon provides more purpose event login in comparison to simple Windows login events. For example, we can capture detailed information regarding process creation, network connection, and changes made to file creation time, all of which is not possible with the simple Windows event logs. At least not when this video was created. Sysmon has numerous capabilities, as mentioned on this slide, such as it logs process creation with full command line for both child and parent processes. It initiates early during the boot process, hence it can capture activity of sophisticated kernel mode marbles. It can record multiple hashes of the processes and provide a globally unique ID termed process GUID, which can be used for correlating the different events related to that particular process. This comes in handy because process IDs get changed but process GUID remain unique and persistent till the system boot. So these are some of the unique capabilities that Sysmon has. Moving forward to the next slide. Sysmon usage commands. These are some of the commands that can be used for the installation, configuration or reconfiguration of Sysmon. As we can see, for installing the Sysmon with the default configuration, we just need to use uh, the hyphen i switch without defining the configuration file. In default configuration, Sysmon do not log network connection events. So if we want to configure Sysmon logging as per the defined requirement, then we can manifest a configuration file and call it in the command line uh, parameter during the installation to configure it accordingly. We will see this in a minute ahead in the video. Moving to the next slide. These are the 28 events that Sysmon is capable of capturing what events needs to be captured and what not that can be defined using the configuration file itself a configuration file is an xml file and uh, can be prepared using the sysmon configuration template you can create your own configuration file using the templates as available on the official microsoft size or you can use any one of the pre-made configuration files from the below mentioned popular GitHub repos, which are Swift on Security Sysmon Config and Olaf Hartong's Modular Sysmon. Swift on Security's Sysmon Config file is simple to use as it follows one file deployment method. This configuration file not uh, will not exclude the Splunk processes from monitoring and logging. Hence, we should add the below configuration on the config file uh, to the section title process create on match exclude. This will help in reducing the unwanted login events as we will be going to integrate the Sysmon with the Splunk in the next coming videos. I suggest using Olaf Hartong's modular Sysmon configuration files. Reason being, his configuration captures a lot more events in comparison to Swift on Security's config file, and also it has separate config files for each event types, which we then need to merge into one XML file using the command mentioned on his GitHub. Since uh, there are individual config files for each security tag, hence it becomes quite easy to edit the configuration on an event ID basis, if you will so. Moreover, the rules in the configs are mapped with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, hence this helps uh, during the incidence response process as well. Now let's jump into the VM and see how to install the Sysmon using Olaf Hartong's mo Sysmon modular. For installation and configuration of the Sysmon, we need to initiate with two things. First, download the Sysmon executable from the Microsoft official site. 
and second download the file repository from Olaf Hartong's uh, git repository so let's quickly do that let us download the sysmon first and then go to Olaf Hartong's git repository and download the whole repository as well so uh, both the uh, files have been downloaded uh, now as we scroll down and we uh, just have a quick look on the, uh, the repository directories we can see each directory uh, actually named as per the sysmon event tags right and then uh, and then actually each directory contains configuration files that define what needs to be included and excluded from the login this gives the flexibility for editing the files as per the user requirement and then there is this powershell script that we essentially going to use uh, to create a single sysmon configuration file by merging all these config files so let's uh, start the sysmon installation process if we scroll down uh, we can see the pre-configured uh, configuration files we could have directly used these files uh, to uh, you know configure our Sys uh, sysmon during installation uh, but for some weird reason uh, this file is not accessible at the time this video was recorded so uh, no worries at all because the author has shared the commands that we can actually use to generate the sysmon configuration files let's click here for more information on that so uh, here are these commands uh, uh, which we actually uh, going to use uh, for uh, installing the sysmon and configuring it uh, with the configuration files so the first command is actually informing us to actually clone the sysmon uh, git repository right which we already did uh, by manually uh, downloading the uh, whole repository in our uh, system and the second command actually tells us to execute the powershell skip present inside the downloaded uh, repository folder and then finally the last command is to merge all the xml files except the file delete modules into a single configuration file which we then use to configure the sysmon right so uh, let's do it then let me uh, go to the down, uh, downloaded uh, directories first if i could actually move the mouse correctly uh, yes so the files are actually uh, downloaded in a gif format so let i have to extract them first uh, let me do it let me quickly extract uh, the folders let me do uh, the same to the second one as well all right cool so both the folders have been uh, now extracted let me remove the uh, zip folders they are not needed now uh, now uh, let us open the repository folder and copy the file path then uh, I have to initiate the PowerShell in admin mode and uh, since uh, we have to run the PowerShell script hence uh, we need to set the execution policy to unrestricted let me quickly do that set execution policy unrestricted enter A to uh, give the affirmation to all and then try to execute the script let me uh, highlight this thing uh, during uh, the recording of this video this script actually was not working uh, what uh, actually is happening uh, this script will run without an errors but when we try to run the last command uh, which was essentially for merging all the xml files it was uh, throwing some error right so uh, let me let me uh, just uh, show you what i meant uh, let's let's run this uh, script so it ran uh, did not show any error now let's go back to the repository and copy the last command which was for merging all the xml files into one sysmon config file let's copy it and go back to a powershell uh, uh, powershell portal enter and and i'm pretty sure this is going to throw error as i uh, said uh, this script is actually uh, not working uh, when i recorded this video 
so what is the workaround so the workaround is actually uh, we have to manually copy paste the uh, the whole script in the uh, powershell so let's quickly go back to the directory and open this is this powershell script in a notepad and copy the whole script go back to the powershell again and paste it done so the script uh, ran and then again go back uh, to the git portal copy the last command paste in the uh, in the powershell and i'm changing the name of the output file um, and uh, enter let's see if it uh, throws any error now none so there is no error the file ran uh, without an error uh, voila so that means this sysmon config 1.xml file is now created under the same sysmon modular directory so uh, let me clear this screen first it, it, it is i don't know what happened uh, it suddenly changed uh, uh, the resolution as well uh, so the file is now downloaded uh, i mean file is now uh, available in the sysmon modular master directory so let me copy that file uh, from uh, sysmon modular master directory to our uh, sysmon uh, folder uh, which we actually downloaded from official microsoft site so i'm doing the same thing here and let me go back to the sysmon uh, directory and copy the sysmon directory path because i have to copy uh, uh, that configuration file here so i just did then uh, let me change uh, the directory to sysmon directory and just for you know confirmation i'm just uh, checking whether uh, that particular sysmon uh, configuration file is available inside this directory now so it it is there so last thing that we have to do is uh, just run the sysmon.exe uh, uh, executable from the sysmon folder uh, with the configuration uh, file that we uh, just created so let me show you uh, so i typed sysmon.exe accept uh, aula a a uh, hyphen i and the sysmon config uh, file enter and it just just got installed right so we can see um, it is showing that uh, sysmon has started right our sysmon configuration is successful at this point uh, just to confirm this uh, what we can do is actually uh, we can open event viewer quickly and uh, we can confirm it from event viewer as well so let me show you let me open the event viewer and if we go to application and services logs it will take, take some time then under microsoft and under windows let it get populated and if we'll scroll to the uh, bottom uh, there we can see a folder with uh, sysmon right there it is so under sysmon if you click on, on operational we can see uh, the logs are getting populated as per our configuration voila so this is it guys uh, sysmon is successfully installed and in the next coming video i will be integrating the sysmon with this plan thank you for watching